Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Lesson 29. And once again, we're talking about Flash Builder and PHP. And I want to help you avoid a terrible error that some people are actually getting when they try to get their PHP files working in Flash Builder. So what we're going to do today is we're going to add our PHP to Flash Builder. So we're going to place our PHP file in our bin debug folder. And one thing you want to make sure is that the name of the class name is the same as the name of the saved file. And if you don't do that, you are going to have problems. So let me show you what we mean. So let's go ahead and go to Flash Builder. And this was a file that we created last time. And we had the PHP option checked and we validated the server. So we're now ready to add PHP to the bin debug folder. You see that little arrow there indicating that that is talking to another shared resource in that research. And that shared resource is in the WAMP folder. Now I'm just going to go ahead and just right click on this and generate a file. So I'm going to add a PHP class to the pin debug folder. And what we're going to do is just create a blank PHP class and copy and paste the code in there. Now there's other ways to do this. This is just one way. And we'll, uh, believe me, in the future be covering a, a, a multiple ways of doing this. I'm just going to right click and go new. And I'm going to go to file. And we'll just call this rand password class. There you go. Dot PHP. Hit finish. And you can see that a RAN password class has been generated and is now in my debug folder. And uh, if I navigate it to that folder on the WAMP server, you'd also see it too. Now, if I right click on that uh, particular file and I go uh, open with text, I can actually see that it is a PHP file, but there's nothing in it. Let me go back to the previous code and copy and paste the uh, PHP file that I have uh, created earlier. So in lesson 28, we'd actually created a nice PHP file with the right class that we need that generates a um, random password and the name of that class is data test and we're going to need to change that to the name that we saved earlier but let's first put it in there try to run it and see what happens. I'm going to hit control A just to copy this I'm going to hit control A to highlight the code here and then control C to copy it then I'm going to go back to Flash Builder and just paste this right into the Flash Builder folder and there's a file. Now I don't need this uh, code down here just below here because that's actually going to generate the password within the uh, class itself. I don't want that to happen. I'll just, so I'll just delete this because I don't need this portion of code. I just need the main class that's going to generate the passcode because I'm going to have Flash Builder tap into this public method and generate the password for me and that will be returned to an array to Flash Builder which I can actually use in the program. So that's all fine and I'm going to go ahead and save that go back to my application and I'm going to use the wizard to connect to that particular file. So we're going to go so we're going to go to Windows and to Data Services and that's the key here. That's going to connect it automatically and generate all the service calls that we need to actually work with this particular application. Once that is brought up you can see below here there's Connect Data Service. I'm going to click on that. Click on PHP and I'm going to try to navigate to that particular file and that file is in my C drive in my WAMP folder in www, so I'm already there. And the name of the application, got to remember that because that's my debug folder name, is ranpassphp. So let's go ahead and go to that. So you can see at the bottom there's this folder ranpassphp debug. If I click on that, you can see there's my PHP class. Let's click on that particular file and let's and once again, we are in the WAMP www ran past PHP debug folder. Click on that file. Go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to bring this down so you can see it. Open. And we should be able to open that file. Hit, hit Next. And then we get this horrible, terrible error. And if you go to the web and you're going to see some postings on this and people don't know how to solve this, I'm going to show you how to fix this error right now. What you actually do, just go ahead and hit OK, get out of that. Let's cancel out of this. Didn't work. I want to go back to my PHP file. And I want to make sure that this name here is the same as the name on my PHP file, right here. It's got to be the same as my class name. If it's not, it's not going to run. So let's change this name to Rand Pass Class. And that's all we have to do. Let's save that now. And now let's navigate to that class and see if we can get it running. So go to Window, Data Services. Connect to data services, PHP, let's navigate to the class. Ran past debug PHP, click on it. And now let's go ahead and run the service and see if we get the classes generated. 
So go next. Oh, yes. And the only thing I see is that one public method, generate user pass, and that's really all I need in a sense to talk to and get that return value coming back to Flash Builder. So everything's working just great. We're going to hit finish. I've solved that horrible Zen uh, error that you see uh, on the web, and no one knows how to do it. It's very simple. Just make sure your class name is the same as uh, the name of the file you saved it as. And I've generated this little uh, piece right here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that and figure out what's happening here. What ha has happened is that Flash Builder has now generated the, all the, the files that we need to actually get it talking to uh, the PHP files. So, oh, so you're going to see right here there's a new folder that's been created. It's called Services Ran Pass Class. Let's go ahead and open that up. And when I click on that, I want to click on this uh, super class right here. And in that super class, I've generated the code that I need in order to talk to uh, the PHP file. And you see right now it's going to be accessing that class method, that generate user pass, that public method to generate my password. And so I've pretty much done all I need to do uh, to get this working. I have one more step. So let's go back to the program itself. I'm going to go to design view. And here's the trick. I'm going to go to data generate form. And what Flash Builder is going to do for me now is generate automatically the code I need to talk to this PHP file. And you can see it's already set up to talk to this object. So it's going to talk to it as an object. And uh, I'm going to hit form return type, configure return type, and uh, hit next. And it's configured it for me and hit finish. Hit finish. And what is done here, it's generated uh, this little uh, useless piece of code here that says generate user pass string. What do I do with that? Not much. What you need to do is go back to the source and take a look at what you're looking at. And what Flash Builder has done for us is generate this wonderful call responder. What's going to happen is, is when you click a button, you're going to run this what's called a token method. And this token basically talks to the server. It's going to pass a token back to the server telling it, hey, run this command, generate user pass. And when it does, it's going to call this call responder. And what that call responder is going to do is send back the username and password. And then, you, in a sense, you're going to parse that user. And what you're going to do is parse that username and password and send it to the screen. So what we need to do is actually create a method within this call responder that in a sense handles that incoming data. And the way you do that, I'm going to show you how to do that, you open up this call responder, and what you're going to do is basically look at the results. And this is so important. The big deal about this in Adobe Flash Builder is that once you execute a command on the server, this call responder is going to ping back to you and tell you it happened and provide you with the data to use and provide you with that data that did happen. So many times in the early days of Flash, I'm going, once I send something up to server, once I send it up to PHP, how do I know what happened? How do I get it to talk back to Flash? And this has all now been automatically programmed into Flash Builder. And I'm going to use the result command. That makes sense, right? Let's hit return. And that's going to automatically generate uh, the code handler for me. So let's hit return. Let's try that again. I'll show you how you do that. Once again, all you have to do in Flash Builder is space, hit result, up comes the command, you're getting coding here, there's the generate results, and there's the code piece right there, and I'm going to put all the code that I need to parse this particular command to grab the state that's coming back. And that's going to be done in terms of an array collection, and I'm going to show you how to do that next time. So uh, let's cover what we've learned so far. The big deal of what we accomplished in this video today was to show you how, in a sense, to bring the PHP class into uh, Flash Builder. And in this particular example, all I did is right-click and I created a class, and then I copied code that I already created into that class. Now, you actually can drop the file in there, but the most important thing, of course, is that you make sure that the name of your class, which is ran pass class, is the same as the name that it's saved as. Very essential. And if you do not do that, you're going to get this horrible Zend error that's going to send you all around the world trying to fix it, and it's a very simple fix. So with that said, uh, we'll continue this process in the next video.
Hey, thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively.